Usually the recipe that I follow takes up to three days to get ready. And for those of you who don't have time and are in a rush, here's a one hour Neapolitan recipe. Let's try it and let's see how it turns out. And all the credits for showing me this method of cooking Neapolitana style pizza goes to Tony Geminani. Be sure to check out his book, The Pizza Bible. It's amazing. And there's so many great recipes in that book. And I'll compare at the end how this quick recipe matches to the authentic three-day version. Let's get started. So to get this dough ready really quickly, we won't be using active dry yeast, but we'll be using a quick rise yeast. And then for the flour, we will use a double O flour. Now double O is just the grade for the fineness or the coarseness of flour two being the highest and the most coarse version of flour and double O being the finest. Add in your yeast and then add in about a quarter cup of warm water. Should be about 60 to 70 Fahrenheit. Mix that really well until the water starts to bubble. Then in the bowl of my KitchenAid, I'm gonna add in all of my flour and then measure about 200 grams of water. Make sure that is lukewarm as well, about 60 to 70 Fahrenheit. And we're using lukewarm water because we want this dough to rise really quickly and that lukewarm water will help activate and wake up that yeast really quickly. Then start the KitchenAid mixer on the lowest setting and then pour in all of your yeast and water mixture. Now add the water until the dough starts to come together and you get a soft and pliable dough. It should not be sticky to touch at all. Once that dough has come together, turn off the KitchenAid and then add in a bit of salt. Then continue mixing for about a minute and then we'll continue kneading for a few minutes on the kitchen countertop. Now, as I'm kneading this, you may be wondering, is there a right way to knead it? Well, kind of, but as long as you're folding and stretching the dough, it's gonna do what we need it to do. And do this until the dough feels really nice and pliable it should be completely smooth and soft on the outside with no creases visible at all. Roll it up into a ball, cover it with a damp piece of kitchen towel or paper towel. Just let that sit for about 40 to 45 minutes. While that goes on, you can prepare your tomato sauce. And that reminds me, for the actual baking process, I'll be using a baking steel. For more info about baking steels and baking stones, you can go to my website and I have some more details for you over there, it's down below. And then you want to preheat your baking steel or your stone at the highest temperature that your oven can go to. Today I'll be using both of them, steel being at the second topmost rack and the stone being at the bottom most. Why? I'll tell you that later. So now let's get back to our sauce. So I'll be using some San Marzano type tomatoes. In most cases, you'll find a can of these. We want to decore and then de-seed these tomatoes. So just simply pluck the core out and then tear the tomato open, get as much seeds out as you can. And then as you can see in my station here, I have one bowl where all the excess juice is collecting then a sieve where I'm actually putting the good flesh of the tomato and then any excess water that's dripping from the good tomato is dripping in a bowl down below. Then you want to kind of break down those tomatoes and puree it and process it through a food mill or the sieve. It's gonna be a really nice and smooth sauce and it's gonna be very rich and tomatoey. And to really add to that, I add in a bit of tomato paste as well, along with a touch of salt, just to release some of those tomatoey flavors. Now in about 40 to 45 minutes, your dough should have doubled up or almost doubled up in size. Now you want to portion it into our three portions. And then for each of your portions, you kind of want to fold it on itself. And as you're doing that and creating that seal, at the bottom, you are creating tension on the top of that ball. And what that's gonna to help to do is as that ball rises, it's gonna be even all around. So that way when you actually pat out the pizza dough, the chances of it being perfectly round is gonna be so high. 
but be careful not to degas the dough too much because we will be baking this in about 15 minutes and the more you work it the harder it will be for you to stretch out that dough so after you've let that dough rest put some flour on your worktop and then put your dough ball right on that flour and then start pressing in to the center of that dough and create a rim across the side of that dough ball then slowly work that dough as you are patting it down and degassing it from the center out and the dough will start to expand now here i'm using gravity to stretch out that dough just hold it against that rim keep that rim as is and just turn and keep turning that dough and gravity is going to keep stretching it and once the surface area is large enough you can use your hands to stretch out using the rim as your guide on where to place your hand and once it's large enough you can add the dough to your knuckles and really work it and stretch through that rim the rim is where all that flour is where all that dough is so that's what you are stretching while maintaining that crease now if you did everything right you'll have something that looks just like this but before i add it to my pizza peel i'm going to add some semolina over the top now before you add any toppings to your pizza go ahead and change your oven setting from bake to broil and use the top broiler if you have that option so today I'm doing a margarita. So for the cheese, I'm using something called Fior di Latte. It's an Italian cheese and it's also known as soft cheese. And you should be able to find this pretty easily, I think, at your local grocer. Now carefully and in a swift push and pull action, add the pizza onto that hot baking steel. I'm gonna bake this under the broiler for one and a half to two minutes and then halfway along the cooking process just rotate that pizza halfway just to make sure that it cooks evenly and then once the cheese has molten and you have some dark spots around the pizza you can transfer the pizza onto the bottom most steel which has been empty and that will help finish off that crust of your pizza then here it is here is what we've been waiting for here is our one hour Napolitana pizza and now I'm just gonna top it off with some Parmesan cheese and once it cools down slightly I learned this the hard way then add in your basil otherwise the basil will turn black and you know you have a good crust when you pick up that slice and the pizza doesn't limp over it stays intact it stays straight I always thought that there's no way you can make a pizza in one day let alone one hour if I want to compare it to my three day recipe which I follow then yeah there are differences but this got ready in one hour sometimes you just don't have the time to wait three days and really plan that out what are the differences well the three day one has a much more developed crust there's actual flavor in it um, there's air pockets and complex patterns in that in that crust which really helps to get a more authentic char in the home broiler method and because that yeast has had time to really develop all the flavors in that dough in the three days the dough reacts differently to the heat but for now enjoy this amazing easy quick version of a Nepoitana pizza if you want more videos just like this one be sure to hit subscribe Hit that bell icon and I'll see you on the next one with the new pizza recipe. See ya.